from Orlando, Florida. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube. Covering Pentaho World 2015. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Hi everybody, welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Sam Kahane with George Gilbert, and we're here with Tim Garnto, Senior VP of Infrastructure and Information Systems at Edo. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So Tim, a lot of excitement here. I know Edo has a lot of great things going on. Can you tell us a little bit about your company? Sure, so Edo is a startup. We're about eight years old, so kind of old for a startup, but uh, still in that startup phase. Um, we are in the card-linked offers market. So we um, help financial service institutions put uh, credit cards and offer, um, sorry, offers and coupons and discounts onto the credit cards for their consumers. Uh, we're headquartered in Nashville, actually dual headquartered Nashville, Chicago, with an uh, office in London. In London, very nice. So were you here at the conference last year? Yes, I was. How have you seen the conference change? Um, you know, for, um, a first and second year conference, these have been amazingly well run and well put together. I, uh, I, I mentioned it to the Pentaho folks last year, same thing, just wonderfully run. Uh, this year it's a little bigger. I think the, um, the sessions uh, are more focused obviously on the new, new uh, technology. Um, so a lot of excitement. It's just been a, it's been a great conference. It, it has, and I think they've grown by 40% this year, so that's great year to year growth. Pretty soon, you know, this will be a 20,000 person conference. Right. So you're the Senior Vice President of Infrastructure and Information Systems. Can you tell us a little bit about your role at Edo? Sure. So uh, as um, Senior Vice President of Infrastructure and Information Systems, I have a, a responsibility over all of our hardware infrastructure, um, our command center who manages all of our um, internal processes and interfaces with um, the banks when they're, you know, occasionally when there's an issue, you know, they have to get involved. Um, and then I also have the data, ser data services team. And those are the people in our company that work with all of our data sources to bring it in, to get the data ready for analysis or reporting. So they spend a lot of time uh, working on the data, getting it ready, um, as well as running our, um, uh, what we call it a targeting application, the, the application that allows us to figure out which person will respond best to which offer. So um, let's talk about the, the, these offers. Everyone's familiar with um, range of offers, you know, all the way from that wonderful experiment called Groupon, you know, to the, uh, I'm, I'm walking into Starbucks and, you know, they're like, okay, we know your favorite drink is such and such, um, we offer you a discount or whatever. Can you tell us sort of where, where in that spectrum you fit and, and um, in terms of enabling your partners to, to make these types of offers? Yeah, so we, um, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to say we, where, where we fit Maybe in Maybe that that's not yeah. the right so spectrum, we, uh, but. Yeah, so we, um, we work with merchant partners um, like a Starbucks or um, you know, a, a Red Robin hamburgers, and we will then take an offer construct from them. You know, hey, somebody, we want, so the company will come to us and say, you know, our average spend in our store is $20. We'd like that to be 25 because that's a common metric, is to try and increase the spend. And um, so we can say, okay, well we'll provide people with an offer, say $5 back on a $25 spend at a restaurant. And then so Red Robin's happy because you know, they're, they're getting more spend um, in, their, in their stores. And then we identify within our, our population, um, I keep saying it that way, but we have absolute, absolutely no idea who anybody is. It's all tokenized and anonymized. So. Uh, but we can look in there and say, okay, who's likely to buy at a, at a fast serve restaurant or a quick serve restaurant? And, and how do you come up with that? Who's likely to buy? Uh, we have a data sciences team out of uh, our Chicago office that's very, very smart. And so they go in and, and produce models that, that indicate you know, who's likely to, to uh, be interested in this offer. And, and we do that based on transaction history. So we don't necessarily know anything about the people other than what their spend has been. Oh, um, so no, no demographic, no psychographic. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. and the transaction history, I assume, is not at the item level, but at the... Right, at um, the merchant level. Merchant, right. wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah. these scientists must be 
rocket scientists. <laughs> they're pretty, they're really, really good. Okay, so they identify some group, some, mm -hmm. some uh, subset of this uh, population. Right. What happens next? Well, as they, as they go through it, the offers get ready to be pushed out. The, they really all just get scored against a, an individual. So, so we call them an individual, but whatever that unique um, oh, stream like of data is. Yeah. So they, they, a, a everything comes one, up with a score, a, a propensity score on it. Like likelihood to right, buy this right. offer. Mm -hmm. or whatever. Yes, Take and, then, and then that will get uh, pushed, what we call pushed out into our production database. It's an HBase based system. Um, to run on our dashboard services or in a mobile app, for example, so the consumer, when they log into their bank's portal or uh, the, the portal application that we host, they will see the orders, the, the, offers. the offers in terms of the propensity order. So the one that, that is most relevant to them is the and on top. And we don't actually not give any offer to any individual. That's a, that's a fairly recent addition to our platform that we rolled out is that we don't stop offers from going to people because um, you know using Pentaho, using uh, Cloudera, we can really just put every offer out to any, any person. But it becomes important because our business model is that we only get paid when the consumer does something. So it's a it's a pay to win, you know, it's a it, if they don't do it, <laughs> we don't get paid and the merchant's not happy. So we have to make sure that they see the most interesting one for them. Okay, that, that much is clear that you would want to promote the most interesting, but it also sounds like um, there's no cost to just presenting one that's a low score, that's low probability of being taken. Is that partly why you've chosen to you know, show everyone at least one deal? Well, we show, we show it, so we show them the deals that we think are most interesting to them. Right. And, and so, yeah, somebody may log in and, and that week or whenever there were no super interesting deals, so they'll get one that's maybe not as interesting. But what we also found is that people travel, and so if I, if I, don't, if I, if I limit offers based on, say, geography, I'm in Nashville, but I travel to Orlando, I travel to Chicago, um, but one of the models, one of the propensity models says, how close are you to uh, a place that you could use this offer? So if you're you know, 500 miles away from a store, then you're probably not likely to use it. But if there's 10 of them on your drive to work, you're probably likely. Okay. But what we found is that people do travel. So if I'm in Chicago, then I will see Chicago-based offers because that's where I'm located. And even though the, the score may be, um, that propensity may be lower because um, of where my normal transaction spend is, I, I will still be able to then see them and take advantage of those offers in that market. Okay, so maybe it makes sense to um, dive a little bit lower into, so what, what's the machinery that makes this work? Um, and you know, it sounds like you're, you're, part of your job is to say, you know, sort of make sure the gears you know, don't grind. Yes. Tell, us, tell us some of the pieces of this machinery. Uh, so uh, almost all of our um, data work, data processing work, is uh, in, a, in a Hadoop cluster. We use uh, Cloudera's distribution. Um, we use uh, the Pentaho tool, the PDI tool, um, for initial ingestion of the uh, incoming data files. So when we get files from our different uh, partners, those files all come in different formats. And uh, so we use PDI to, pull, to take that data in, standardize it, and then present it into what we call our transaction matching system. That's the system that says, uh, does this person, does this transaction match any known uh, offer and is it available to this particular person? And if it is, then that is what generates what we call a redemption to send back okay, the cash. Okay, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you, you bring in from different information sources um, and then exactly how do you take those apart to say a transaction would be appropriate for this offer or a transaction in the past matches mm -hmm someone who would be likely to use this offer. How does that part work? So, yeah, after we've processed all of those, um, all of those files yeah. on a very automated basis, uh, all that data then goes into uh, our data warehouse. It's, a, again, part of that Hadoop cluster and gets, um, because they all come from different uh, partners, it's all, we load all of the raw data and then we have an internal, uh, an interim step that takes that raw data and conforms it to a, a common format um, we use PDI for that, and then the, the final step is for 
a PDI job that takes and all PDI that. And PDI Pentaho sorry, data integration. Yes, Pentaho data okay. integration. Um, takes that and then transforms that data into a final output for either analysis or reporting. So it's a three-step process to get that data from the raw, the raw data that we get uh, into the cluster and then ready for our data scientists to do their work um, or reporting. Okay. And then it's the data scientists who really come up with uh, the models and the likelihoods. And so we've got, the way we've uh, structured it is we have a number of different models, kind of, if you think about it, almost micro models. Uh, that's and are they being sort of tested against each other to see which one's more, more accurate? Well, in this case, what we do is, is yes, yes and no. So we have, like I said, we have a geographic uh, model that says how close are you. We've got branding models that say, is this a good brand, is this a bad brand? And so there's a lot of different models that run and then the scores are aggregated to, def to decide a, oh. an actual propensity scoring. Interesting. So, um, yeah, we, uh, it was actually at this conference last year that they were giving a talk on modeling and, 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 and the best way to do it in, in Hadoop and it sound, you know, it's, it's interesting but a lot of small models that are then brought together because of the parallel processing nature of Hadoop makes a lot of sense, as opposed to trying to do one massive model to get everything, you do a lot of small models. Oh, very interesting. So, so Tim, we have 20 minutes till the keynotes, so we're running out of time here. So if you're going to leave the viewers watching and everybody here with one takeaway, what would that takeaway be? Oh, no wow. pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, wow, I don't even know where to go with I that. I know we so, went over um, a lot. So. Maybe how, do, how does, does Pentaho make that process easier on top of Hadoop, or if so, how? Yeah, the Pentaho has definitely made that process easier for us on top of Hadoop. Uh, all their steps, uh, like their MapReduce step, one of our guys, is uh, he had got his master's degree in computer science with a uh, uh, concentration on big data, and so he was used to writing all of the MapReduce. When he showed up, he's like, this is way easier. Um, but Pentaho's given us the flexibility to change our business and to change how we're processing everything without having to uh, re-change all of the infrastructure, or, or for that matter, the staffing, right? So certain people are, are better at certain types of things, but with Pentaho, we've, we've shielded them from having to learn MapReduce or you know, dive super deep into the technology so they can be more thoughtful about what they're doing. They don't have to be great coders, they can be great data scientists so or data... Shielding, the yes. concept of shielding from the low-level plumbing. Right. We hear that as a theme. And okay. then, yeah, the other would be Hadoop is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you were awesome during this interview. Tim, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Sam Kahane with George Gilbert. Uh, keep watching, we have one more interview here at Pentaho World. Uh, you can watch all the interviews at siliconangle.tv.